The best is if you get all the parts you need to install side in in front of you on the desk so you don't get confused about which parts to use. Here we have the back plate that goes on the back of the motherboard and it holds the water block in place. And you can see it can be adjusted to fit on different platforms. The center setting is for 775. The medium setting is for 1155 and 1156. And the outer setting is for 1366. We're gonna install it on 1155, so we move all of them to the medium setting. Next, you have standoffs. And you can see these standoffs have some black washers on top. These standoffs go for all sockets, except for 2011. 2011 has special standoffs that you see here, and those are mounted directly onto the socket. And then you have this little nifty tool that you can use to secure the standoffs on top of the motherboard. Then you have two different sets of brackets. These brackets are for all AMD sockets and these brackets are for all Intel sockets. And you use these four little screws to secure the brackets to the water block directly. And then you have different screws to secure fans to the radiator and to secure the radiator to the case itself. On some cases, you have to remove the entire motherboard from the system so you can actually install the backplate. Luckily on Trooper, you don't have to do this. You can just uh, remove the side panel, the rear side panel, and you can see there's a huge cutout and you can access the motherboard. So just place the backplate over it like so. Make sure it's all the way through. And then hold it in place while you turn around the system and start to install the standoffs. All right, here I have the standoff with the black washer, just what I need for this platform. And while my right hand is holding the back plate in place, I'm putting the standoffs on the screws and secure them. As you can see, I only installed one or two of the standoffs, so uh, these are a little bit harder to reach, so I put the system flat down. You can do the same. So just install the standoffs where you can reach the screws easily and then put the system down flat. And you can then install the remaining standoffs much more easily. After all the standoffs are in place, make sure that they're tight and secure so uh, the water block doesn't come off while the system is running. All right, there we are. The case fan at the rear of the case usually blows air out towards the back. So you usually have airflow coming in at the front and going out at the back. For water cooling, it's actually better to have the fan installed so it sucks fresh air into the case from the back of the case and then it goes out at the top. So you want to install the fan in a way that it sucks fresh air from outside of the case, from behind the case and blows it into the case. So you get cold air running through the radiator. So you look at the fan and you can see this is the rotation speed, the blades are going this way and this is the airflow. So you want the fan installed in this way. Then you look at the fan wire and you see that uh, it's coming off at this angle, but ideally you want it to be at the bottom. So you're gonna install the fan like this. So you take one of the fan screws, one, one first, and then you put the fan in the right position. Make sure you use the right mounting holes. There's usually holes for 140 millimeter fans and 120 millimeter fans. This is a 120 millimeter fans fan, so we need the inner holes. And if the screw doesn't go through all the way, just wiggle it a little bit. There we go. So now we have the fan in place. Now we're gonna install the Intel mounting brackets. And you see that there's a gap right here and we just slide them in there like this and align them with the mounting holes. Here, you see the two screws go right here and we just secure it. Now it's time to move the water cooling unit into the case and we're gonna just lie the water block right here above the CPU and install the radiator first. So the radiator you want facing down with the tubings. So these go at the bottom and the fan is already in place, still balanced on the two screws that I put in place, but it's not installed yet. So we push the radiator from the inside and then install the screws. Keep the screws a little bit loose, so uh, there's still a little bit room for the radiator to wiggle around. And then you install the remaining two screws and fasten them bit by bit. Now 
Now carefully lift the water block up. So make sure you don't scratch anything on your motherboard. Get it out of the way. And now you can install thermal paste. We're using uh, our own X1 Extreme Fusion thermal paste. And most people install too much. What you want is really uh, a small dip in the center of the CPU IHS that is about the size of a single rice corn or maybe two rice corns. There we go. Sticky stuff. That's about enough. You're gonna want to install it in this orientation. So you just carefully move it above the CPU socket. Make sure the screws are aligned. Wiggle it around a little bit so you can feel that the screws snapped in into the standoffs. And then you hold the water block in place like this while you secru secure the screws. And make sure that you start with one screw. You turn it four small times and then you go to the opposing side and you do the same thing and on this side and on the opposing side again and I'll repeat the same pattern over and over until all the screws are in place this is important to make sure that the water block is um, installed really flat on the CPU and you get the best temperatures if you don't do it right, you can get the worst temperatures by around 2 or 3 degrees. So you might want to install it again and again to make sure you get it installed really well if you care about every little degree. Now it's time to connect the pump inside the water block and the fan attached to the radiator. The pump uses a 3-pin header. So I'm gonna touch it over here. It's actually a four pin header on the motherboard, but that's not a problem. Do keep in mind though, if it's a three pin header on the motherboard, you have to enter BIOS or use the motherboard utility in Windows and make sure that this fan is set to spin at full speed the whole time. Otherwise your pump is not gonna run at full speed and you're not gonna get very nice temperatures. And then you take the fan and I'm gonna plug it in onto the CPU fan header. Make sure it doesn't block the fans, the case fans. And that's it. 